Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. Uh, my name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. As you can see, our emulator is just booting up here. So uh, in the meantime, I think this episode, we are going to cover implementing the profile screen. It might turn more into a preferences screen, um, to be honest. Uh, I don't know about the name of it, but the secondary screen here that we have in our uh, home screen from the bottom nav. So uh, once this boots up, I can show you what I'm talking about. And in the meantime, I've gone ahead and actually just kind of didn't write too much code, but just kind of took care of some of the uh, boilerplate stuff, right? So my idea here is we have a profile epoxy controller that's going to basically fuel the entire screen. Uh, and right now we're going to focus on the categories aspect of things. So uh, I know a few episodes ago we migrated the database to support having the category entity a part of the database. And so now we're going to allow in this screen the user to review the categories that they have and then add new ones and eventually update them and all that kind of stuff. So we just have a variable here that's going to hold the list of our categories initialized to nothing. On our internal setter here we just set the field and then we request our model build which is going to run our build models function. And then we have a little bit of a section here in this code that's going to be reflected in the UI, right? So we're going to add a header model here. If you missed it in the last episode, we created the extension function and I told you this is going to be used so we can just very easily add a header model and we're going to call it categories. Then we're going to loop through all of our categories that we have in this list, adding them to uh, the UI. And then at the bottom, we're going to have the little empty button epoxy model, which uh, will basically just be a button there. And when nobody, or when there are no categories, it will serve as an empty state. And then when there are categories, it will serve as the entry point for them to add new elements or, or new categories to the database. So then we just went ahead really quickly and added these two data classes here to represent our epoxy models. Taking a look at the layout here, both very simple. We have a text view inside of a card view here for the categories. And then we literally just have a button that's going to be here on the screen. So uh, just went ahead and just kind of built this out, thought about it a little bit, what I wanted to do, and figured I wouldn't put this on screen because we've covered a lot of this already. If you've missed any of it, uh, especially the epoxy controller, I'll link a card to a very good video that uh, will hopefully get you caught up to speed. Um, and then otherwise, uh, let's dive right into it. So in our profile fragment here, we have uh, built a local variable to hold our controller, basically provide an empty or the on click for that button. And as you can see here, the declaration of it in the uh, of this variable in the constructor is a variable that is of excuse me of type uh, function that returns nothing or unit. Um, so we can you know either maybe provide like a lambda at the end of this controller, but because we might end up um, using a bunch more or requiring a bunch more attributes or variables to be passed into the constructor, just naming them and we can actually uh, basically declare a function that's going to be invoked here with this little syntax of the two colons and then the name of the function itself. Uh, we don't have to add the parentheses at the end that throws the syntax off, but if you put two colons and then the name of the function, it will basically say that uh, this variable here is more or less a function pointer to uh, this function right here that exists in the profile. So just a way to bubble up our clicks and events. And so now at this point in the on view created, we're going to have to go ahead and update the profile epoxy controller categories here, right? So inside of our shared view model, we have everything set up right now for the item entities and we're going to add them as we see fit here, but it's going to, we're going to basically do the exact same thing other than the insert or the init to this uh, view model for our category entities. So something I just want to add here that I don't know if you're aware of, but if we say region item entity and then n region, sorry, and put stuff in between here, 
um, these little tags here that exist as comments will actually allow you to collapse everything that exists in, within them and it puts that little you know name on top here whatever it is that you put after the word region and n region here uh, so just a way to kind of keep your cl files clean and condensed and whatnot and we can basically now copy this exact thing and instead of item entity here we can just very easily say category entity which we will um, now update all of these variable names to say category entity and then all of our uh, Yep, I guess that works. All of these as well, to say insert, insert category. Um, and now we've basically copied all of these functions except for um, we've made them for our category entities here. So now our repository obviously knows nothing about the category side of things. So if we go ahead and here, very quickly, region item entity, so boom, and then we can go ahead and do the exact same thing that exists here. Instead, we can just change that to say category. Uh, this is just very satisfying, to be honest, to just have to change all of those at once, and basically everything works now, except for uh, we did not name that appropriately, and now we did. So wonderful. We now have all of our insert, delete, update, and you know get all of the categories. Uh, functions basically mimicking the insert or sorry the item entity ones same thing here bubbling up in our um, uh, live data here and then I guess we can also just do this inside the init but we have our item entities live data so now we're just going to have our category entities live data which is going to be a list of our category entities and then this gets set here inside of our init. So I believe we can just run the exact same thing and uh, we can get all of our categories. Since it's flow, again, we will collect, uh, call collect on them. And then our categories and these light data post value of our categories. Wonderful. So initialize our uh, flow connectivity to the DB for item entities and category entities, right? Uh, and now at this point, we can actually use this category entities live data. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy that. And at our view layer, say shared view model, category entities live data, we're gonna go ahead and observe we know how this goes. The uh, category entity list. And then at this point, we can just say profile proxy controller categories equals category entity list. Wonderful. Uh, let's give this a run and see how things look. Okay, so re ran it. Nothing here seems to have changed. However, on our profile screen, we still have nothing. So let's go ahead and take a look at our binding here. We can just go ahead and remove this. I'll tell you that much. Oh, we are not setting the binding proxy or cipher view. Uh, get set controller is going to be the Profile epoxy controller. Forgot all about that minor detail, but we're back in no time. Uh, okay, so a very interesting, I've discovered something very interesting. If we had it before, where basically both of these function calls or both of these um, 
like flow collection statements here, we're in the same view model, uh, sorry, the same uh, coroutine scope, and it seemed like this second section here just literally was not, um, was, was never running. It was just constantly waiting at collect. I guess that's like a flow thing, um, but that's not making too much sense to me. So if anyone has any idea why that's happening, I'd appreciate a little tip in the comments. But um, if we just create two different coroutine scopes, even though they have the same parent context here, um, it works. So quite interesting for sure, but um, it wasn't working unless I did it separately like this. So anyway, uh, our profile works, just looks horrible. And I realized that um, that's because we have this epoxy recycler view set up as a grid layout manager with a span of three. And I was, I completely forgot about that. I was not accounting for it. So I don't think that's too big of a problem. I actually kind of like that. However, I think uh, we know what to do here. Get span count. We're just going to return total span count. Make this one take up the entire um, width of the screen there. And then same thing with this one. I think this is pretty safe to do because the header epoxy model, even though it's used in this extension function, which is going to get used in a bunch of different places, uh, I think it makes sense in this context because the header, you're always going to want it to take up the entire span, no matter what it is. Um, and if not, then I would think you'd kind of need to make a one-off header or something along those lines. So we do not have a, any categories here and we can go ahead and see that our button is uh, working and then it's actually gonna go ahead and hit here our uh, little callback. So I just wanna check this out in light mode as well just to make sure that everything's looking good. Uh, but yeah, everything looks great here as far as how that is being set. Uh, See a shadow being clipped, and now the shadow is no longer being clipped. Bugs me, might not bug anybody else, but that bugs me like crazy. So, um, all right, looks like this is pretty good here. I think uh, go ahead and cut the video here. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and just implement our little add category here and get something uh, in the database, and then connect everything back up so that they can assign some categories to this these elements. So. I'll catch you in the next one.